Hello and welcome. In this video I'll show you some techniques which can be used for modeling a one-to-one -one building element in Revit Architecture 2013. The techniques being shown has been used in a student project which looks like this. And the student has created uh, drawings and cutting lists based upon the full 3D model of it. That means that he has created a 3D model 2D plan section and elevations as well as cutting list for the individual workstations within the production. Here's station 2 and 3 and so on. I won't show you the full element but I'll show you the techniques which has been used. Here's what we'll end up with, a 3D model with views of the individual layers you can say as well as cutting list showing uh, the structural columns, the structural framing, meaning beams, as well as a wall schedule, which was our board. Okay, I will now get started and I'll open a new project and I'll base it upon the VIA template for element production. If you don't have access to it, you can use a default template and what I've done is I renamed my elevations to front, back side, left and right side as well as top and bottom for my floor plans. And then I added a few reference planes and I think I'll just add a few more like this and make sure that I have that I have an opening of uh, 1000 like this. So this will be the door and I'll now get started modeling. I'll go to structure, choose beam and this is a family I've created but if um, you want to create your own you can you can go to structural framing and you can choose the M timber metric timber. Okay, I'll get started drawing. I won't care so much about the settings yet, but I'll see what happens. I'll draw from here to here and whoopty, I got an arrow saying that it's not visible. I'll just check in my 3D and it is visible, so it means that it's below um, my view, view range, you can say. So let's take a look at the settings and there might be something with set direction justification so I'll try to change this to bottom and whoopty now it goes to the top side okay I'll continue with knowing that and now it's already set to top so I'll change it to bottom and I'll draw again from here to here and now I have my two um, first beams and 3D it looks like this again in order to draw the top beam I'll do something similar I'll draw from here to here and let's take a look in the elevation it's on top of the top of the elements so in this case it needs to be changed to top like this you'll get more experience with this and remember the settings uh, when working a little bit longer with it. Next step I'll draw, draw a few columns and I will do that as I imagine you will do it. Uh, press columns you've been asked to pick a plane. I might select um, the side of my structural frame my beam here as my reference plane and then I imagine that I can just click um, somewhere 45 above here and let's see if I can snap to something here I imagine this is correct and I am notice that somehow this column affects my um, beams in a way I don't want it to I also notice uh, that it probably didn't choose the right dimension. I'll change that. 
uh, and I noticed that it's um, not rotated correctly. So let's take one step at a time. I'll start out rotating at 90 degrees. I'll unjoin elements like this. I will see if I can get these unjoined and that's being done by changing the column style to vertical like this. You notice it jumps nicely back and now it seems like I only need to align so I press AL click the reference line click here and let's take a look from the left side I also need to do some alignment here like this and let's take a 3D view upon it and now it actually looks as I want it to so then I could get started um, copying from here to here and then maybe select both of them and copy them from here to here and now I actually got something that looks more or less okay the last step will be to make the small beam here and I'll go to my element bottom and I might wanna draw that from here to here and let's take a look back side of it and see what it looks like it's nicely uh, placed on the bottom of the element but I need to change um, the start level offset to 2100 uh, both of them and now it jumps up like this Okay, that was the first step, um, building my framework. The next step will be to build the plate and I'll do that by going to the um, back side and when doing um, a plate or a uh, DPM, some kind of uh, membrane, um, you could either do it by um, using the walls and edit profiles afterwards or you could also create a model in place and I will show you how to do that um, as a wall category and I named it wall 1 and then I'll do it as an extrusion and I might want to do it on uh, let's say I'll just see if I can find a plane here and then I will do a small sketch of where I want the boards to be probably something like this it's a little bit of delete to do cleaning up and now I have a nice outline of it and I'll finish it and for some reason I I imagine it's way too thick so I need to change the extrusion and let's say it's some kind of a board let's give it 30 millimeters now it's there okay now we just need to model the four buttons and I'll reuse these columns by jumping to the back of my model selecting all of them copying them maybe out here first step changing the type of it move them back to here and then I'll change the offset to zero in both cases okay now we have everything modeled in the next video in this series I'll show you how to control the views but also our schedules based upon f uh, parameters and filters thank you for listening goodbye